The new Hearthstone expansion, Voyage to the Sunken City, was just announced, and with every new expansion, there is a lot of new mechanics, and in that case, there is new keywords. But I bet you're wondering, are these new keywords going to be any good? The first brand new keyword of the expansion is Dredge. Dredge is a keyword that lets you look at the bottom three cards of your deck and choose one to bubble up to the top. There are some cards that are also called Sunken, which sink to the bottom of your deck, and you could use the Dredge keyword to bring them up to the top. An example of a Sunken card is Asheron Sweeper, which is a 3-mana three 3-4 three, Mage Mech, which has the Battlecry put a Sunken Sweeper on the bottom of your deck. And a Sunken Sweeper is a 3-mana three 3-4 three, Mage Mech that has the Battlecry add 3 random mechs to your hand. So let's talk about Dredge first. Dredge is a very good keyword in my opinion. You could look at this as discovering a card in your deck. And if you're discovering a card in your deck, that's often going to be a very great thing for you because you put good cards in your deck most of the time. It is important to note for Dredge that it only puts it on the top of your deck where compared to discover it puts it in your hand which is a big difference because that means you need to have one extra card draw in order to get that dredge card from the top of your deck even though the dredge card isn't in your hand immediately I still think it's a very powerful mechanic the idea of picking a card for your next draw to deal with a minion or the current situation or further your game plan is a very powerful effect and often if you use the dredge mechanic you could just draw a card and then you get the card that you draw to the top of your deck in your hand immediately. It's basically discovering a card in your deck with extra steps, and I do think that mechanic is going to see a lot of play. Dredge is also a mechanic that can have a lot of synergies. We've seen this with Blood Scent Violethin already, which is a 4 mana 4-4 four, four Murloc for Warlock Battlecry Dredge. If it's a Murloc, change its cost to health instead of mana. If there are a lot of effects like this with the keyword Dredge, this keyword will get even better because you're getting a bonus for dredging a card. This makes me think that the Hearthstone development team will keep returning to Dredge because there's just so much design space to be had with this keyword, just like Discover. Now, the sunken mechanic, I'm not 100% sure on. It seems that this mechanic is entirely based on a card to card basis. Sometimes the sunken card will be very good. Other times it will be absolutely horrible. But unless you have Dredge, this card is very slow because you know it's at the bottom of your deck. So you either have to be turbo drawing or you have to have a Dredge card ready for the sunken card to to be useful in majority of the games of Hearthstone, which makes me think the sunken mechanic is just going to be a little bit too slow in majority of the matchups you play. And it reminds me a lot of Inspire, where if you can hero power all the time, it will be really good. But most of the time, it'll just feel like it's not actually worth it. The next new mechanic is the Naga synergies. And obviously, this is not an official keyword, but it is a pretty big deal because this is probably going to be one of the main attractions of this expansion. Nagas are spell focused minion types that often give you bonuses for playing one or more spells while the Nagas are in your hand. First one we'll look at is when you play a spell with a Naga in your hand. We have an example of this with Spell Coiler, a 2 mana 2, 3 mage minion that is a Naga, of course. Battle Cry, if you've cast a spell while holding this, discover a spell. This is a very interesting mechanic to evaluate because, again, it kind of depends on a card to card basis, but the idea of this mechanic is pretty well designed. It wants you to hold a Naga in your hand, which means you're not playing playing for tempo. Think about this mechanic is that you need a spell and you need a Naga in your hand. If you play a spell without the Naga in your hand, the Naga is useless. And if you play the Naga without casting a spell first, this is garbage. This is a two mana two three. You're not playing that in your Hearthstone deck. The other way to use a Naga in the spell is the reverse of what we saw, which is that you play a Naga first and then the spell gets something fun. For example, we have Serpent Wing, which is a one mana priest spell. Give a minion plus one plus one. If you played a Naga while holding this, add a Serpent Wig to your hand. Now, this is the same issue as you need a Naga and this spell to be in your hand at the same time. If you don't have this, Serpent Wig is basically a one mana give a minion plus one plus one, which you're not going to run in your Hearthstone deck. Basically, this is the same problem as the previous example where you need one or the other. And I guess you could play a Naga on its own and it'll probably be OK. But then Serpent Wig is absolutely stranded. And I don't think you ever really want to draw this card if you're not running enough Nagas. Now, what I will say is that we have seen this sort of mechanic beforehand with dragons, and we're currently seeing that now with what they released in Anixia's Lair. And those cards are generally OK. They're not super impactful. They're just fine. I'm going to lean with this mechanic being fine, but I'm not super optimistic on this at the moment, especially from the cards that we've seen. But there are so many cards to be revealed. Last keyword we have in the new expansion is a big one. 
a very big one. The last keyword is Colossal. The keyword Colossal are too big to fit on one card. They come with extra appendages that synergize with their main body in powerful ways. The appendages are summoned whenever the Colossal minion is summoned, even if the Colossal minion wasn't played from hand. The first example of a Colossal Legendary is Kolak, which is a seven mana six five Druid Beast Legendary. Colossal plus one, which is the amount of appendages the Colossal minion will summon when it is summoned and is immune while you control Kolak Shell. Kolak Shell is a 5 mana 0 8 druid taunt minion with a death rattle of gain 8 armor. The other colossal minion that has been showcased is Z Leg of the Abyss, which is a 7 mana 3 6 demon hunter demon legendary. Colossal plus 4, which means it summons 4 appendages when this minion is summoned. At the start of your turn, increase the damage of Z Leg stocks by 1. In this case, every single appendage that Z Log summons is a stock and they, they all do the exact same thing, which is at the end of the turn, deal one damage to a random enemy. It is important to note that the colossal pieces are like regular minions, which means they can actually be rezzed if they die. And this is confirmed by one of the developers, just in case you were curious. The colossal keyword is a very interesting keyword because we have not really seen anything like this before. I can compare dredge to discover and I can compare the Naga synergies with dragons. That being said, I do think the colossal keyword is very very powerful. From the two legendaries that we have seen already, both of them are extremely strong. In my opinion, a lot of these Colossus minions are going to remind me of Death Speaker Blackthorn, which was the Death Rattle legendary release for Demon Hunter. When this card is played, it feels like you just got absolutely destroyed because this card does so much for one card. The Colossal minions feel like it's the exact same thing. Both of these legendaries that they showcase so far have extremely powerful effects and you basically need to deal with them immediately or the game's probably gonna just be over. I also think one of the biggest advantages of the Colossal keyword is that they feel like they're gonna go into almost every single deck you want. Compared to Death Speaker Blackthorn, again, you need to put this card into a Death Rattle base deck, but both of the ones they showcase for Colossals don't need to go into any particular deck. You don't need Nagas. You don't need spells. These are just strictly very powerful cards. This keyword is probably going to be the strongest one we've seen in an extremely long period of time. I don't even know what to compare this with. Maybe it's like the Galakron one without invoking. It's just very powerful effects that you want immediately. I feel like mirror matches between decks, it might come down to just who draws their Colossus first because it's just such a huge tempo advantage over your opponent that it might just seal the game right there. I I'm very excited to see the rest of the cards of this expansion and see where they end up bringing a lot of these designs and let me know what keywords you're very excited for in the comments down below. Make sure you subscribe. You look fantastic.